Well, once again, we find ourselves at the Dallas DFW airport, and Benedict is headed for where? Nigeria. Nigeria, her home country, and not only her home country, but we're going to the land of the Ibus. Yeah. <laughs> you know, when I first uh, learned she was from the Ibu tribe, I had to look it up to see how it's spelled, and I never would have guessed the spelling. It's I-G-B-O. Right. So that, to me, sounds like Igbo, but they pronounce it Ibu. Yeah, Ibu. What? <laughs> Ibu. Well, the, here's the interesting thing about that. Now, she, you're in a, a place where you know the people, you know the language, you were speaking that from yes. your babyhood. But when she preaches, she doesn't preach in her... You know, she, if it was me, I think I'd preach in my native tongue. But when she preaches, it has to be in English, and then they have to translate it, even though she knows full well the language. Why is it that you preach in English when you could just as easily preach in Igbo? Well, one thing is that I know my language very well, but, you know, for the sake of some other people from other countries like America that will listen to the message, I have to use, you know, English, uh, you know, a little English that I can speak. And then since we have interpreter, the interpreter can interpret to everyone that, you know, will listen to it in um, my language. So uh, it's not really a problem. Well, actually, there is one good thing about that, in addition to what you said, and that is, I can understand it, so if you make any theological errors, I can correct you on it later. <laughs> no comment. No, no, co no comment on that. Well, we are headed, uh, Benedict is headed there. I am going to hang out here in the Dallas area in our home for another uh, 10 or 11 days, so you've got a lot to do in a short time. Yes, a whole lot to do in a little time, and I know that, you know, by the grace of God, we'll accomplish something great. Yeah, we were even working on posters and flyers uh, this morning. That's how things are running. But uh, we are looking forward to being back in Africa, back in Nigeria. And uh, you've got several big, important things that you need to jump on immediately. Uh, what are some of those things? Making the children's clothes, making sure that the flyers are well done, making sure that we get um, a lot of uh, medical supplies for the free medical, and so many other things. And one interesting thing is that in some uh, African men's minds, they assume a woman is weak, a woman can't uh, really know how to do very much, and when Benedicta gets there, uh, she takes over with authority, and some of them are kind of shocked, aren't they? Yeah, I don't care. <laughs> Sometimes she's been called an iron woman or a man who th uh, looks like a woman. Right? Are you going there right now, really? <laughs> <laughs> but that's what you have to be to really be an administrator and effective, especially when you're going into a new situation, a new community, and you know we've got a lot to do in a short time so uh, we thank God for her administrative gifts and then when I get there and the meetings begin you take off your administrator hat and you become a preacher yeah when I start preaching they see a whole lot side of me and all that <laughs> names calling goes like quickly they'll be like whoa we <laughs> we don't know what we have well, you know, I had the same reaction because when I married her, I had no idea she could preach. And so they gave her a microphone at the church. And uh, lo and behold, she just uh, preached up a storm that very first weekend after we were married in an African church, in a Nigerian church. So I realized then and there, uh, this lady can preach. And uh, I was happy about that. Well, when you know what your calling is, you start early to work on yourself towards it. And uh, you were actually working on sermons and, and thinking about preaching when there really were no opportunities for you to preach. Right. You get yourself ready when, even when there is no opportunities because you never know God may be working out something in future that you know will launch you up in there. And that's exactly what happened. Well, that is right. She was in her 20s living in a very tiny one-room apartment, uh, no bathroom, no kitchen, uh, just a, a single room, no air conditioning. 
anyway, she was in that little one-room apartment about as big as an American's small bathroom, and she was preaching, she was singing, she was preparing sermons, waiting for the day to come. Right, waiting for the right time. You know, when God says to me, anywhere you find yourself, stay there and make yourself at home until I say so. I was like, okay, God, what is going on? I stayed in Lagos. They didn't know that it would take me 15 years before you show up. And then things moved quickly, didn't they? Things moved quickly. Very, very quickly. Well, we thank God for our Benedicta and her gifts, both as an administrator and a preacher. And uh, we appreciate your prayers. Please pray for her, uh, pray for me, pray for the mission. And thank you for your support, your love, your prayers. And we'll try to update you a little bit more as the days go by.